All right, thank you uh, very much. Great to be on again, and happy new year for all the all the listeners. Uh, look, let's just jump into the first slide because from from a company perspective, it's um it's been a really busy kind of holiday period, and for those investors perhaps who are new to the story, uh, there are a number of significant milestones that we've been able to deliver um, right at the end of last year and the start of this year. Um, and this slide kind of summarizes um, some of those. And you'll see on the right-hand side, a number of big names that are associated with, uh, with these key uh, announcements. Look, on the commercialization front, um, we've really expanded our market opportunity in Europe by appointing Thermo Fisher. Uh, if you recall, Thermo Fisher have been our US exclusive distributor for about a year. And following that really positive start of distribution and commercial traction in the United States, it's been really pleasing to expand that distribution agreement to cover, to, to cover all of Europe. Um, and so when you think about where we were focused before in Europe, it was the Ger Germany, the UK and France, so kind of three countries. Well, now we're expanding that market through this distribution agreement with Thermo Fisher to cover all the Western, all the Eastern Europe. So it adds about 34 countries to, to that portfolio. Clearly it's gonna take some time and we'll go through the training uh, with Thermo Fisher, but that expansion is, is, is one that, that is significant. Adds probably another 500 uh, odd customers to our um, total addressable market opportunity. So a big deal there in terms of commercializing uh, and, and expanding our market there in Europe with a really trusted name who's performed extremely well from a distribution perspective for us uh, in the United States. In terms of product development, we've got funding or received funding through an, a new agreement with AstraZeneca, uh, as well as Thermo Fisher. And, and what this does is funds some tech, uh, technology development and gets us into a brand new vertical within environmental monitoring. Specifically, it's looking at microbial quality control uh, testing which is something that, that, that occurs with drug manufacturing. So drug manufacturing is done in a sterile environment or a clean room environment, and they put these uh, agar plates in to, to monitor from a quality control and quality assurance uh, perspective. So, you know, look, what we've really achieved just over, you know, the, the end of last year and moving into this year is that we've secured some non-dilutive funding um, and it's really to expand our existing platform. So not starting again or not going on in, into any tangent, it's really based on what we've been able to, to deliver on the current platform, get funding to expand that platform into new verticals, um, which are in their own right, extremely large. And I'll talk about uh, that a little bit more, as well as forming partnerships. Um, and, and in the case of Thermo Fisher, extending an existing partnership. And so we've got really some really strong backers behind the product and clearly they are advocates uh, of, of the technology. So look, that, that just kind of summarizes some recent key achievements. I don't think the market have, has really understand that. So this is the first time I'm actually being able to, to, to get that into the market. Uh, look, next slide kind of just talks about who we are and what our mission is. Uh, and that's really all about um, transforming the way microbiology practices occur. And, you know, really specifically the Petri dish or, or the culture plate, that's the, the key area. This is a 130 year old kind of uh, invention, if you like, that um, around the world today is still very manual, manual in the way the plates are processed, manual in the way the plates uh, are interpreted. And so we're really looking to digitize and to bring that kind of technology up into the, into the 21st uh, um, century. And our technology disrupts this environment. Um, and from a maturity perspective, you'll get an idea as I talk through where we're at, where we've got a product we're in commercialization when we've got big partners behind us. So we've, you know, we've de-risked. I'm not talking to you about a product that's an invention or something that would be great to do. We've, we've actually gone through all of that exercise and, and we're in the commercialization uh, phase. And I think this picture on the right there is a great example of uh, bringing that to life. And so th this is the health services lab in London. Uh, they're part of the Sonic group and they purchased two instruments and um, a, a great indication of, of our products already being used uh, in the market. Next slide talks about uh, the market opportunity, you know, only in the clinical space. So I'll talk a bit more about the new market opportunity within pharma, but uh, really our focus has been on, on this core invention is getting into the clinical market um, uh, and, and to that extent, it's kind of infectious diseases. So kind of think a, a urinary tract infection, um, think about um, golden staph identification, think about superbugs and antimicrobial resistance. They're the kind of, um, um, uh, I guess, infectious disease 
um, disciplines that we're looking to provide automation to. And the picture there kind of gives a, a really good indication of what a typical lab would look like. And, and in this case, it's manually looking at uh, a Petri dish, uh, providing some interpretation and then manually keying in um, that information into the computer laboratory information management system to, to provide those results. So a very manual process that exists today. Uh, the, the other kind of macroeconomic uh, feature that we're seeing is, is a shortage of qualified microbiologists. There are, there are just simply not enough microbiologists coming through the university system. And, you know, that's causing a, an increased uh, vacancy rate. We see that across the board. But even, you know, pre-COVID, where we've seen it get a little bit worse, uh, it, it's increased to about 10% of microbiology jobs in the U.S., um, are vacant at any time. And that's significantly increasing uh, wages. So the average wage now of a microbiologist, depending on their level of, of seniority, is anywhere from 160 to 180,000 US dollars. So, you know, the market's growing, infectious diseases are growing, superbugs, you know, are, are classified as a real issue from the World Health Organization. And so we're talking about a global market opportunity that has not got enough staff that has not got a lot of automation uh, currently uh, and, is, and is growing. So a great time to be in this diagnostic space uh, through the instrumentation. And the next slide kind of summarizes how we're leading the way uh, in this digitization, you know, bringing this manual review of microbiology up to the 21st century, where we're uh, really applying a machine vision capability. And that's really what our core invention is. And that's where our IP, our, our portfolio of patents exist. It's the way that we take an image of the Petri dish and how we've trained our algorithms to interpret real time what's growing on that plate. And we're making an active autonomous decision without the need of a microbiologist to intervene or, or to provide their own in, in interpretation. So it is true autonomous decision-making, which is why it's a, a class two medical device uh, from a US FDA perspective. Uh, and we've done all of the clinical trials. And this gets back to my earlier point around where we're at in the maturity. We've got a platform technology. We've already got um, all, the, all the clinical trials and all the regulatory approvals in place. Uh, a huge publication portfolio now, which continues to grow. And, you know, the extension of our existing distribution agreement with Thermo Fisher uh, following the first 12 months in the US, now going into Europe in an expanded way, really demonstrates big companies uh, and, and their brand uh, and their sales organization and reach uh, behind our product, behind the technology. Uh, and that allows us to get into many more customers uh, in, a, in a scalable way. Next slide talks a, a bit more about kind of, you know, um, what that market opportunity looks like um, and, and, um, and specifically through this relationship with Thermo Fisher. Um, you know, we've increased uh, from 2,000 labs as our addressable market to 2,500 uh, labs, and that's adding these additional 30 countries in, uh, mainly, like I said, uh, all of Eastern and all of uh, Western Europe. And so, you know, this partnership, while it was signed at the very end of last year, and that's going to take some time. All of our energy is going now into, into launch planning, you know, and how we're going to effectively launch the product with Thermo Fisher uh, throughout this calendar year. And where, you know, there's going to be a, a team of us that will go across to uh, to Europe uh, this month and, and certainly over, the uh, over, the, over this current quarter in a really focused way to, to perform all of the, the onboarding and the training. And, and clearly some of that's done uh, remotely uh, as well. Next slide, please. And look, we have had commercial uh, traction. It's been a tough uh, couple of years uh, throughout COVID. Um, and really, you know, during that time, our customers uh, were the ones doing all of the COVID testing. And so effectively, you know, our ability to sell and get in to talk to our customers were shut off for a couple of years. That allowed us to really kind of focus on some of our technology development the, the APAS Pharma development kind of being one there as well as our antimicrobial resistance uh, module. So we, we didn't waste that effort. We, we reutilized our resources where we believe this is going to accelerate growth over, over future years. But it did constrain our ability to gain that commercial traction in that time period. Um, what we found is that when we appointed Thermo Fisher in that first kind of year, um, our sales cycle is typically 12 to 15 months. Well, they purchased five instruments within that first 
uh, first year of being appointed. Um, and we're starting to see a step change uh, at the end of last year, moving, you know, selling seven instruments. We've now got an, an install base globally of 13. And we would expect another step change as we kind of progress that commercialization moving uh, throughout calendar year 2023. The way the revenue model works is that there's an upfront capex. So the end user price is 300,000 US dollars. That's for the instrumentation itself. And then there's an annual software license of in the vicinity of, of, of $30,000. So that's an annual license that comes uh, directly to us. And so, you know, the way that Thermo typically sell this is on a, on a five year contract. Um, it bundles service and just gives that peace of mind to the customer. And so when you think of when we sell an instrument, the value across that period of time uh, is, a, is around that 450,000 uh, US dollars. So that's that kind of end user price. So, you know, an attractive revenue model where we've got some upfront uh, CapEx for the customer, uh, but then there's that annuity stream, which we've already expended all of the money developing the product. Um, and so that comes directly uh, to, to us as the company. Next slide. And we've come a long way. It's uh, it, it's taken certainly much longer than we expected and cost us uh, more than we would have expected as well. But uh, but we invented this core technology back in 2016, and that's where we received our first US FDA clearance. Uh, we had to do a de novo submission. That meant that there's no predicate that existed. Um, the predicate is a, a manual reading of the culture plate. Um, and so we, we led the way in that regard, and we've led the way in subsequent FDA and European regulatory clearances, whereby now we're, we, we have a product, we have a number of regulatory clearances, both in the US here in Australia uh, uh, and, and in Europe, to ensure that we can get out and sell the, sell the product. It's a platform technology where we've got the hardware and we've got an ability to develop the software, um, we call them analysis modules, to cater for a variety of infectious diseases. And that's kind of characterized by the number of plate media types you can see there on the screen. The appointment of Thermo Fisher, you know, happened and it was a really big step. And, and we did a lot of the groundwork whereby we did get obviously the regulatory approvals, but we're also able to get key opinion leader established. We generated early sales and, you know, they only put their name behind a product that they have confidence uh, in, in, in the product and its ability to have product market fit and for them to sell effectively into, into their customers. And look, looking beyond, you know, this year and moving beyond that, you can see some pictures there of an APAS compact. That's a smaller version of the instrument, the antimicrobial resistance um, uh, Petri dish there, and then moving into that pharma space, which I'll talk about um, uh, um, in a moment. Next slide. And what all of that means is that we've got an increased market opportunity. And so, you know, we've been developing the product focused very much on the clinical space. And that's a, you know, six and a half billion dollar market opportunity with our current product. So it remains a big opportunity. But I think importantly, what we're trying to now articulate is the significance of these more recent milestones and these agreements that we've been able to have with the likes of Thermo Fisher and AstraZeneca and our funding the development of our analysis module, the software to move into an expanded market, you know, the pharmaceutical microbial quality control market. And so that obviously increases the number of customers. It's a different customer base. It's a completely different vertical. Um, and, and with the APAS Compact, that smaller version of the instrument, again, we've received some funding through the government, through the CTCM um, yeah, institution there, which allows us to, to co-fund some of that development. So, you know, these announcements effectively have doubled our total addressable market. And, you know, we've only been able to do that based on what we've achieved in the clinical market because we've got a product. And, and now because we have a product, because it's validated in the market, we're getting investment from us, AstraZeneca, from Thermo Fisher uh, to expand the current platform technology into these new verticals. Next slide. Um, and so, you know, just to again clarify the significance of this, so it's about 1.6 million or a bit under uh, funding that we've received from both AstraZeneca and Thermo Fisher. Um, Astra, AstraZeneca are keen to have a full validation uh, of the product. We're working with them in partnership. So we'll do all the verification, the development, um, but they're going to do the validation within their own sites. But, you know, rest assured, we're developing this not for one company, we're developing it for an industry. 
Um, there's a lot of standardization through manufacturing of drugs. In fact, it's a, it's a standardized process that's governed by, by the regulators. Uh, so consistency is really relevant and really important. And then Thermo Fisher are leaders in, in their media, and so they're supporting the media. Look, this is the, uh, the last three months um, market cap of you know, around $22, $23 million. Um, and, uh, and these announcements have uh, increased the liquidity of our stock, but also provided a bit of a positive, uh, positive inflection point. Just being conscious of time, I think I'll look to wrap it up here and then open up to Q&A. You know, um, there is no better time to be in microbiology diagnostics. We've been at this for, for, for a few years now. And, you know, slowly but surely, we've been able to really tick off a lot of those boxes on the, on the development of the core product. And now most recently, we're, we're now delivering on that commercialization promise. We still have room to move. Uh, and so that's, that remains our key focus. But through these recent agreements, we're doubling the total addressable market. We've got some really big players behind us who are backing us, backing our technology um, and, and a fair bit of blue sky on both the product development and the commercialization opportunity uh, that is ahead for the company. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Brent. Uh, lots of lots of questions as usual. Um, just in regards to AstraZeneca, for for example, looks like a, a very encouraging uh, deal. What happens to the intellectual property as part of that uh, project? Yeah, all of the IP remains with with the company. So the APAS platform is a platform technology, and so it's a machine learning decision tree algorithm based approach where we control the the image capture as well as the algorithm itself. And so what we're what we're effectively doing is that we're ex we're extending an existing technology, and so to that extent, it means that uh, you know there's no all all the IP remains owned by the company, and if there if there were to be any new IP generated through this, it would it would still remain with the company. So they're kind of helping you fund the the product the the project, and then does that enable you to then sell the product elsewhere as well outside of your partnership? Yeah, we're not encumbered. Um, in any way. Uh, and so it allows us to put in place appropriate commercial agreements uh, once the product is, is, is ready to, to then go about distributing it in the most effective way. Uh, I would say yeah, Thermo Fisher clearly have made an investment. So already I think it's it's obvious that they would be an interested uh, partner uh, in that regard. And is there any more regulatory hurdles ahead of you in regards to being able to kind of sell the product globally? No, there's not. So we've got on the clinical side, we've got the regulatory clearances um, that we need to sell the product. Uh, on the environmental monitoring, the new area, uh, it, there's no regulatory body, if you like. We don't have to uh, apply to any regulator to get that product in, into the market. The manufacturing process is certainly a regulated process, but in terms of uh, automated plate reading, that in its own right is not a regulated activity. And, and there's a question uh, here from Peter. Where, where is the product actually manufactured? Yeah, it's manufactured in Melbourne, a company called Planet Innovation. They're quite well known uh, here domestically in Australia uh, as, a, as a real innovator and manufacturer of uh, medical equipment um, and, and diagnostic equipment. And, and, you, and you spoke about the addressable market, and uh, I think you had seven product sales uh, last year. What, and you talk about the target market. How many products are we talking about selling? Thousands here? How big? How does that pipeline look over the next, say, one to five years or so? Yeah, look, I mean, we obviously are putting binding forecasts in in any way, but what we do see, it's it's certainly in the hundreds, and I think in the you know getting into, I don't want to even quote a thousand, but you know, I certainly think it's it, it's in the multiple hundreds when we look at the both the clinical market as well as the pharma market opportunity. And look, the, we've been developing the clinical application for years, and that's really about developing the platform technology. And so when we look at the pharma opportunity. We're not talking about a, another four or five years. We're talking about a relatively fast product development. We expect to have a product available, certainly for demonstration purposes this year and probably in the first half of this year. Um, and without the regulatory burden that we've needed to, to go through, all of that infrastructure is in place. So we expect a, a quicker uptake and, and the product, because of we're extending an existing um, technology, is, is also a little bit more straightforward. And Brent, just finally, is there any competitors in this space that are doing anything similar with similar technology? There are competitors in the space. So, um, and, and that's why it's really interesting AstraZeneca came to us because they assessed all of the uh, all of the competitors in the market and concluded that there are a few key issues with those competitors. One 
is that they weren't scalable, uh, and two, that is that they had proprietary consumables that were linked to their product. And, uh, and they don't like that because it doesn't give them flexibility. And I'd say that's characterized more broadly uh, across the board. So there are competitors in the space. They're still emerging in terms of providing automation. It comes back to the fact that there still hasn't been huge investment in petri dish automation, either in the clinical and also the environmental space. But, you know, we, we see those competitors helping communicate and to have that change management that automation can be done within the pharma space and we see significant differentiation between our product and theirs that allows us to stand alone uh, in our own right thanks brent um thanks for the story uh we'll catch up with you again in 2023 good luck out there mate thanks tim thanks all see you later